Now let's talk about the losers of free agency so far. And this one hurts. Because if you guys are watching the video podcast up on YouTube, and you guys are seeing the shirt that I'm wearing right now as a Falcons fan, I hate to say it, man. This free agency period sucks. And you know what I said last year? This free agency period sucks. And you know what I said the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that? Ever since 2013, I could go back and say, the Falcons bring in or don't bring in a lot of free agents. I don't know if that's their philosophy. I have no idea. But they don't bring in a lot of free agents just because of the lack of cap space that they spend and put towards more players like Matt Ryan or Julio Jones. And they just year after year don't have enough money to spend and signing big names. Or they bring in players if they have the money that a lot of people would think, oh, that's a big name. They should do well for the Atlanta Falcons. And then they suck. 2013, we needed a running back. We signed Steven Jackson for the Rams. Ended up not doing much. You want to speak about a running back? Let's talk about last year. Todd Gurley. Yeah, goal line back. Had a decent amount of touchdowns if you look at his stats. But man, his knees. His knees are, it's a, it's a real thing. He, he's really lost a step. So uh, they bring in all these free agents that really don't do that well. Dante Fowler as well. Last year, I, I like Fowler. I think he's a good player, but I don't think he really did much that last year and even the players that they draft as well for the long run don't really end up doing much year after year it's just a failed defensive lineman after defensive lineman with Vic Beasley and uh, Takaris McKinley and now this period we're seeing that we don't have enough money to really even bring in a disappointing free agent at this point now they restructured the contract of Matt Ryan and Dante Fowler as well, freed up some money, which is good. But what that tells us at this point is that you are having Matt Ryan be the franchise quarterback for the time being, and you don't really expect to make a move for a top quarterback prospect in the NFL draft. Or at least what it tells us is you save money for Matt Ryan's contract. You don't want to trade back for the fourth overall pick. You could. But you're saving money and not signing any free agents this year so far because you want to save that money for that high draft pick because it it matters as far as the contract and the money that you pay for the draft pick based off of the position that they were drafted. So you want to save that money for that fourth overall pick. Who that fourth overall pick is, I have no idea. My thoughts at this point after restructuring the contract with Matt Ryan, I don't believe it's going to be a quarterback. I believe it's going to be someone else. But we don't have money. So we can't do anything. The best thing that we did was uh, we just signed Eric Harris, the Raiders' safety. And we re-signed Jaden Graham, a backup tight end. Oh, let's bring in a third-string tight end as well with Lee Smith. Let's trade for him. Let's trade a seventh-round pick. You know, there's not a lot of moves that the Falcons are doing. And it just happens year after year. And I kind of compare it to the New Orleans Saints, the division rival, who was dead last in cap space. Minus $60 million that they had to spend this season. The Falcons had 10 times more than that, minus $6 million. And the Saints have still, still made better moves in free agency than the Falcons. Once Drew Brees retired, they restructured the contract to Taysom Hill, made that four years voidable if they wanted to, and they re-signed their quarterback of the future, Jameis Winston, for a one-year $12 million contract. That's still much better than what the Falcons have done. I mean, if you want to make any moves to Falcons, Marlon Mack, a running back, a 24-year-old good player who could be a running back one, you're starting running back for years to come, signed a one-year $2 million contract with the Colts. $2 million. So if you wanted to save money, you could have still gotten Marlon Mack for $2 million. Now, I don't know if he took a pay cut. Mack did to stay with the Colts. Maybe the Falcons or have already reached out to Mack and he declined. Maybe he was just asking for $8 million, $9 million. I have no idea. But the fact that you sign Mack to a two-year or $2 million contract, the Colts did, tells me that the Falcons could have made a push for him to be the starting running back of their franchise. Falcons, I would say, is one of the biggest losers in free agency so far.